Hello. I've toyed with the idea of filming this for a long time. I've decided to do it today because we are in the middle of a global pandemic of COVID-19. People are in quarantine, people are in self-isolation, people are in lockdown, and the whole world seems to be really, really anxious, understandably. And for those of us with health, health anxiety or hypochondriasis, this is routine. We are constantly telling ourselves the worst thing. So I'm gonna make this video today share my story of health anxiety with you and hopefully help someone feel less alone or less crazy because that's how I feel when I'm at the worst of it and just to kind of get my story out into the world. I am just going to say a uh, content warning for this video, there is two stories of this that are potentially traumatic and could be triggering to some people, specifically people with cardiophobia, <laughs> including myself, uh, but I will definitely warn you before like that section of the video uh, when I'm about to tell the story and tell you when you can skip forward and etc but it, I'm gonna try and make it really really digestible and easy to hear without getting panicky and flustery because I know how that can be um, and I don't want to do that to anyone so I will warn you. Um, I'm gonna try and tell you my story today and hopefully in the future, if it's something that people are interested in, I might make a few more videos based on health anxiety, just because when I'm at my worst, I kind of go on YouTube and, and search for it. And, you know, I've watched people's stories and kind of thought, oh my God, I'm not alone. Somebody else has this exact same thing and it makes me feel better. Um, so maybe I can be that for someone else. I'm not sure. But if there's anything that you do want to see, <laughs> I am by no means a YouTuber, but leave me a comment and I will try and get that done. Uh, even if it's just you want some advice not that I can give you I'm not qualified to advise you on any of this um but I can maybe give like a friendly friendly word or maybe relate to your experience a little bit so without further ado I am going to try and tell you my health anxiety story I have been anxious for about 20 years and it's not a great way to live. I was a very anxious child and not necessarily just about my health, but also about my health. So I do have generalized anxiety disorder as well as hypochondriasis, but it, it's been a very common theme throughout my life. Um, I remember being as young as four and five and worrying about my health, uh, which is, you know, on a very, very mild scale. I'm not saying I was like full blown worrying and having panic attacks. It was just like a concern in the back of my head um, about that kind of thing. And as I progressed through life, I went through like phases of health anxiety. Um, so episodes, I'm guessing. And I would obsess over different health problems throughout these episodes. So sometimes I'd be worried about cancer, sometimes I'd be worried about like certain brain things, sometimes I'd be worried about skin and like any rashes or even just a patch of dry skin would really worry me. Um, and naturally each phase kind of passed because I was too young to understand how the human body works. So I'd just take precautions such as sleeping far away from electronic devices because I thought they'd be really bad for my brain. Um, and making certain adjustments to my life to kind of cater for the worries, which is kind of where the really bad habits really set their foundations to form. Because as soon as you start adjusting your life to cater for your anxiety, rather than adjusting your anxiety to cater for your life, that's where problems start to occur and you start to put your life on hold and live your life differently in fear of your own anxiety. But things really started to get bad when I was probably about 11. So I was just moving into high school for like fellow UK dwellers. <laughs> um, and this, I'm gonna talk about something that is potentially triggering right now to people with cardiophobia. Um, I'm gonna, as I said earlier, gonna try and keep it as, you know, easy to digest as possible but I was on a family holiday and I'm not going to say what happened but I ended up witnessing someone trying to be resuscitated and at the time 
I didn't feel an overwhelming amount of trauma whether that's because I was in fight or flight or whether it was because I was just slightly I wasn't too young to understand what was happening I knew what was happening but maybe the kind of fear of mortality hadn't fully hit me at that point in my life or something I'm not sure but I think that this was a major event in my life that has probably in future been triggered so any trauma that was surrounding that was triggered later on in life I, I'm guessing I can only guess I don't fully know um but yeah that was the end of the content warning for that story I don't want to go into too much detail to avoid triggering people so I think that was a huge stage in my life to kind of start the cardiophobia so the kind of obsession and worry around the heart um a couple of years after this this is the second content warning um i was in high school i was in a lesson and it was biology and in biology before i'd experienced like mild panic over learning things like felt a bit warm or just like felt a bit dry mouthed and a little bit anxious but this led to the worst panic attack that I have ever had to date. And this was over seven years ago now. I'm going to say it was about seven years ago. And it was really, really traumatic. And I think that for me, that is what started everything. Because we were shown a video of a man suffering cardiac arrest. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I was hanging out the window panicking you know i was i was experiencing the symptoms such as the tightness in my chest and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy in my own mind because i was constantly thinking about the symptoms i was starting to experience the symptoms even though there was nothing wrong and that really really threw turbulence into my life i was thrown into a depressive episode and that for me is when health anxiety really really kicked in um and i felt very misunderstood every time i did try and talk about it so i didn't often try and talk about it and throughout high school i had quite a few therapists and like counselors and meetings with members of staff at the school and things like that just to kind of talk about my own personal life and, and issues because there was a lot more going on than just my health anxiety but that was always my main source of worry and I never spoke about it because I was so scared that if I said something out loud, it would come true. I was so scared that if I said to a teacher or a therapist, hey, I'm worried about my heart, they would send me to the doctors to get maybe cardiograms or things like that. And that would make me panic even more. Now with most people with hypochondriasis or health anxiety, they're at the doctors every week or every couple of days. That is typically the, the stereotype of somebody with health anxiety. Uh, they become so obsessed with their health that they are constantly visiting the doctors and getting tests and things like that. And I've seen this portrayed in like pieces of media that tell the narrative of hypochondriasis. But for me, this isn't the case. I avoid the doctors at all costs. It terrifies me. Going into hospitals terrifies me. Any medical facility gives me the fear, the ultimate fear, and I will just spiral. So when I was told that I would need a surgery and I would need to be anaesthetised, I immediately burst into tears. It wasn't a big surgery. It was basically a corrective cosmetic surgery. So it was, it was an oral surgery to kind of fix my teeth. And... Um, it wasn't the surgery itself that terrified me, it was the anaesthetic. So over the course of about five years, I attempted that surgery six times. Only one of the times was I successful. And even then it was a trial and a tribulation because I didn't end up having that surgery under general anaesthetic. I performed that surgery under local anaesthetic where they just numbed the area that they were working on and I wasn't sedated. I was very strongly recommended against this by multiple professionals. I was told, you're going to be better under general anaesthetic, you're going to be better sedated, like you won't feel the pain, you won't be able to panic because you'll be asleep or very out of it if I was sedated. 
But the idea of both of those things terrified me so much that I found a doctor who was willing to perform that surgery whilst I was fully awake, fully conscious and just numbed in the mouth. And I did. And I went through with it and the surgery was, it, it went fine, I healed fine, everything was good and it was a success and I'm happy with the results. But every time I was tried to put under general anaesthetic, I had a huge panic attack and it was a massive setback. And the way that some staff dealt with me and the way like certain things that I was told and the way that I was spoken to and the response to my anxiety was not handled well, which set me back each time. I become more and more anxious. Like every time they tried to put a heart rate monitor on me or the chest pads or anything, I would just completely freak out because I think I was just so scared that I'd either not survive the anaesthetic, even though there's no reason that I shouldn't, or they would detect some sort of problem while I was asleep by monitoring my heart. I think those are my two biggest fears in that scenario. Um, however, everything went well and my anxiety didn't allow me to do what should have been done. And it took a lot longer than it should have done. And that was, again, me modifying my life for anxiety instead of modifying my anxiety for my life. And that's a bad habit. That's not something I wanted to fall into. And it's something that I'm slowly learning to deal with and slowly kind of coming out of the habit with. Um, but yeah, after my surgery, my anxiety calmed down for a while. And then I started having heart palpitations. Um, you know, a normal part of stress, a completely normal thing. But at the time I didn't realize this. I had never spoken to anybody else about heart palpitations. So only when I asked someone, do you know what I mean when I say this happens? <coughs> Excuse me. And they were like, oh yeah, I get that all the time. And I was kind of like, oh, this is a normal thing. And so I slowly started talking to more and more people about it and then quickly realised that it's just something that happens when you're stressed or when you're anxious. And the main problem is with my symptoms, a lot of them are things that happen when anxious. And so I get then anxious about the symptoms and it ends up as a vicious cycle of anxiety that I get stuck in and I spiral <clears throat> to the point where I started inventing things in my own head. So when I was in school, I actually came up with a funny name for, for my symptoms that was chest pain Tuesday because every Tuesday I seem to get chest pains and then I was like every morning I'd wake up like oh chest pain Tuesday today so of course I would get chest pains which would cause me to be anxious and it just became a self-fulfilling prophecy so there was no real reason for me to have those chest pains there was nothing wrong it was all up here because what the mind can do to the body is incredibly powerful and that has been something that the realisation of that has been a massive part of my recovery. I wouldn't say I'm fully recovered, I say that I just manage this well. But then last year, uh, I took a really, really bad turn and had a really bad episode. And it was seemingly brought on by nothing. But I ended up going to an airport, about to board the plane, massive panic attack due to health anxiety. Had to turn around and just not go on my holiday, um, which was a massive disappointment in myself and for the people I was going with and they didn't mind they were like it's okay we understand like we just want you to be better but I held that guilt and that sense of shame with me thinking that I have let my anxiety win again and it, it kind of spiraled into a point where I was almost agoraphobic I didn't want to leave the house and every time I did I would have a panic attack I didn't want to walk because I didn't want to raise my heart rate I didn't want to exercise because I didn't want to raise my heart rate and it was crippling because all of this took place over the summer which is usually because of seasonal affective disorder my happy time and the time where I feel the most free of anxiety and any other struggles that I might have but I felt so trapped and so isolated that I decided right I finally need to talk to a professional about this and I need to stop worrying about not talking about it because up until this point I had never really told anybody even my family about my health anxiety so I finally opened up to my mum and just laid everything out on the table and we found a therapist locally to me 
who performed hypnotherapy and a type of therapy called ACT. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to a little bit a little bit more about hypno-act therapy, which is what I went through, but I found that to be a massive help. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think by any means that it has cured me, and I don't think that everybody needs to go through this type of therapy to feel better. I think it is all from within, but it's about finding the right tools and resources to do so. Um, and as of this year, I've been traveling and exploring and doing the things that I've wanted to do for the longest time that I haven't been able to do because of my anxiety. And now I feel like I'm in a place of freedom and I feel like I am no longer trapped under this blanket. And don't get me wrong, I am scared of another episode. I am worried that it might in future consume me again. But for now, I'm happy and I'm content. I'm not traveling right now because there is a global pandemic, as I said earlier, and everything is a little bit scary right now. But the main thing is, it is possible to have freedom from health anxiety. It is possible to feel like yourself again, because for the longest time, I didn't. And this episode lasted almost a year. And it's only very, very recently that I've started feeling like myself again. So let this be a message of hope. Let this be a reminder to anybody who is worrying or suffering or obsessing or having compulsions in regards to their health anxiety, that you are not alone. You are valid. You are not crazy. You have this way of thinking that of course it's unhealthy and you don't want to be this way, but there is always a way to get out of it and you can create your own safe space. You don't need to be in a certain place at a certain time. You can create your own safe space whenever. You don't need to rely on anything else to be calm. You can create that sense of calm within yourself. You just need to work out how. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about that in future in different videos. I hope this video hasn't been too rambly and it hasn't been too much information and it hasn't been too hit and miss um and i hope that this could potentially help someone but until then i will be in the comments of anybody who wants to talk or discuss things and i just want to let you know that there is help available and i will leave some useful links and information in the description below that you can browse at your leisure and i will leave some other videos uh, that i found useful so Thank you for taking the time to listen to my story with health anxiety um, and keep surviving.